Hey, sports fans. How you doing? Game Ninja Maniacs. Maul, how are you doing? That's pretty weird. Are you going to say something to the people? Anything at all? Obi-Wan, you know, there was talk of you being in it. They cut you out. Anything? Anyway, let's get on with the show. We are here to talk about Obi-Wan. Yeah, and this is episode three. Hmm. So, first of all, uh, spoiler review. Sorry. If you haven't seen the episode, chances are you don't want to be here. But, now that that is over with, uh, three, two, one, and zero. Okay, so let's talk about Obi-Wan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. An Obi-Wan series in episode three. We only got a few more episodes to go, but they did not hold anything back. And let me tell you something. A lot of people I hear them talking and moaning and bitching about it, but no. I, for one, appreciated it. Unfortunately, Maul's not back, but I was trying to tell him, you know, there was... Never mind. So anyway, episode starts off with where we pretty much left off with Obi-Wan and Leia on a ship headed towards a planet. And Anakin. That's right. Oh my god. Hayden Christensen. Uh, hashi dashi. So he's being put back together again, um, much like we saw um, at the end of episode three. And there is fear, absolute fear, in the heart of Obi-Wan. Because now he knows he's alive. And he just, his heart is searching for this. So, as Vader comes to himself, we can see he's pretty much on the same planet where he was burned. And he has a throne and a basically a castle literally overlooking where he was burned which if anybody knows from the comics the um, limited run this is something he did often he always looked out over that because uh, Palpatine encourages this in the Sith because it it keeping them in that emotional state drives their anger it it's fuel and I'm glad they did this because when he speaks to the Inquisitor soon after he talks to her and basically threatens her because when you're in Vader's pocket it's not a good thing. And I know she's looking for power and she's looking to become whatever shit is she's trying to become. Um, if you win and do something good for him, yeah, you're in his pocket. But if you fail, you will die a very painful death. So, as he's finished talking to her and threatens her, he walks over to the window and he's looking down. And this is what he's overlooking. He's overlooking the exact place where... Obi-Wan left him to die and he was burned. Pan to this ship finally getting to this planet and Obi-Wan is reprehensible because he doesn't really trust anybody. The last person he trusts was Anakin and trust is in low supply with him. So as he's trying to talk to Leia, he's also very reprehensible the fact that this guy set him up to meet people here. And of course nobody shows up. But we actually get a chance to have some rhetoric back and forth between Leia and Obi-Wan. And some of it is really good from her uh, sensing that he knows her mother and him speaking to her about knowing her mother and having love for her mother. He also talks about a brother that now makes that canon in the universe because Jedi are taken at a very young age, much like children trafficking and slaves. So while the Jedi may have great intentions, the road to hell is paved with great, great intentions. Uh, that's true. And nothing is truer than that than in the Jedi. So he talks about a brother that he thinks he remembers and uh, his mother and father's hands. And it's just a very tender moment. Which, at that moment, they're picked up by a new character which kind of sounds like Seth Rogen or Zach Braff. Uh, one of those two. A combination of both. Um, 
And, oh, I want to get back. Uh, when Anakin was on his throne, uh, Lord Vader, um, we got James Earl Jones' voice. And from what I understand, he's credited in this series. So I think that really was James Earl Jones. But it's not the James Earl Jones from the the newer movies. It's the James Earl Jones from the older ones. And that's kind of where we're headed. So I understood that. And um, I just liked hearing his voice. A lot of people was going to bitch and moan about it. But I liked hearing his voice. So... We get to the point where this creature picks them up and he gives them a ride and then he gives droids a ride and while they're sitting there talking back and forth one of the uh clone suit was well, not clones but one of the imperial troopers asked him uh about his his daughter and of course he calls her leia he because he he's off his game he's got a lot to deal with and obi-wan has a lot to deal with his heart is on shook and it should be. He's being hunted down by what he thinks is his brother. And there's a scene where Hayden Christensen, Hayden Christensen plays where he's looking at him in his dark robes and he turns around and sees them. And he's just shook to his core because that's how he remembers him. He does not know yet of the Vader character. He only sees Anakin. And he is shook to his soul because there's a reckoning coming and he knows it. And he knows he's not ready. I mean, at one point he was, you know, I will do what I must. But it's been 10 years, as he keeps saying. And he is not ready for this. So, as they get to this gate point, he's met by more soldiers. And Obi-Wan realizes that he is literally flushed out. And he takes aim with his blaster. And he dispatches these guys, much like he did back in the day. He's pretty, pretty, pretty on point with them. Uh, and then uh, another assignment of soldiers come and they hold him down and he's captured again. And I was like, oh, please, again, again. But I understand that because he's actually meant by a, um, a captain or a high ranking officer, which when he puts his head down, he hears blaster sounds and she ends up blasting the rest of the troops. She takes him because this is the person that uh, Kamal set him up with in the previous episode. She was supposed to meet him there, which he didn't get there, and now here we are. So she takes him to a hiding spot, and uh, Leia's still a little bit reprehensible because she's learning more and more about this person she's with, and I know she's brain-jacking him. Even though he won't say certain things, she, her little, ooh, she, that gift is tight. She is on it. So they go into this place um, where you come up to a droid a big droid that like moves stuff which uh, in my mind I'm thinking from the animated series that this is Rex or Wrecker because there was just I, the fact that he didn't speak kind of gave it away but even more importantly later on when the uh, troops come to search the hut he holds a hammer behind his back and that is not droid like that is not droid like in any way that's human like so if they had stepped just a little bit further somebody would have met with a hammer so i'm thinking this is rex or um wrecker I, i'm hoping actually um so as the inquisitor comes in a tent they're going down this uh jedi slave tunnel which is kind of like the underground railroad for jedis um this is their way of being taken off planet by um, by help and aid. So there still is aid and help to the Jedi. We also find out that more Jedi survived than we thought executing Order 66 because there's a lot of drawings and scratchings on the wall, one of which Obi-Wan recognizes. Um, it is then that he tells Leia and the, the woman who saved them to keep going because he feels something in his heart and what he feels is very real it is vader and he is on planet and he is a beast straight up so as obi-wan peers out the window looking on at the inquisitors come out he catches a glimpse of vader who is walking through town force choking, yanking, dragging, snapping necks, popping collarbones. He is torturing these people. And I think he was doing that so that he could get a bead on where Obi-Wan was because he knows how he feels. Clearly there is nothing left of, of Anakin inside him right now. He is all about business. And this is one of the first times that you actually see fear in the eyes of Obi-Wan. 
fear is a path to the dark side, but there is much fear I sense in you, brother. So he ends up taking off the opposite way, giving Leia and the, uh, the woman time to get away. But lo and behold, every turn, every corner, every move, Vader is there, and he is like Jason. He is literally there to instill fear in Obi-Wan. And it is for the first time that we see Obi-Wan draw his saber and that blue luminous, luminescent glow lights up the screen. And I'm like, okay, we're here. But this is only episode three. They ain't gonna give us it. They ain't gonna give us it. So <laughs> after he lights up his saber, uh, Vader lights up his and he literally starts talking to Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan wants nothing. He wants no part of this. And he dips off to go around uh, coal piles and things and everywhere he turns Vader is there just like Jason and this is his worst nightmare so he gets to the point where he shook and realizes he's not gonna get away from this without a fight and Lord Vader whoo he doesn't want to kill Obi-Wan right now he wants to torture him and he is straight up about that like literally like when this fight ensues, at first I was thinking a little bit would come back to Obi-Wan so we could see like a straight fight, but Vader only uses one hand. One hand. He's clearly just toying with him. He's talking about how he's weak and how the 10 years, like he's, he's enjoying this because he, I think he wanted more of a fight. He's like a cat toying with his prey and... Obi-Wan is tossed, thrown, and the, the saber strikes, and a lot of people are angry because it wasn't the fast spinning saber fights that we normally see, but I like the fact that it's slowed down because it's more time. You get to see that Anakin transformed into Vader, and he was so impulsive the first time he fought him, he made mistakes. This time, there is no mistakes. He is literally concentrated on this moment. Every block, every move, every hit, he literally is just toying with him. Like he didn't even unleash nowhere near any of his power. Leading to the point where he catches Obi-Wan in a force choke and lifts him up off the ground. And he grips him up so good that Obi-Wan drops his saber. And it was at this point I was like, where are we, where are we going with this, guys? And Vader literally yanks these barrels over that spills this fluid and then lights it with his saber and it is flames and fire and ladies and gentlemen we know where this is going because Anakin Anakin was crispified on the side of that volcano and he wants Obi-Wan to feel every bit of what he felt so he drags him down and literally drags him in through the fire and slowly spins him rotisserie style through the fire and it is it is awful to watch Obi-Wan go through this because in his mind somewhere he's like shit this is what I did to him and Anakin Vader is in his head saying the same thing like yeah this is what you did to me but this is one tiny subset of what I felt and you were going to fill this to your last end. And I was expecting him to be singed way more than what he was. But then he literally blows out the fire with the force. And lets him know like this is just the beginning. Like we just getting started. And if, if I could say if this was a parallel to Pulp Fiction. We ain't through by a long shot. I'm about to get medieval on your ass. And that's exactly where he was. So, uh, the woman who broke off from Leia and told her to run to the uh, ship, she, I guess, sensed somehow, she's force sensitive, but she sensed somehow that he would need help, even though Leia told him to go, told her to go and help him, there was something in her that sensed he needed it, and when she, when she peeks over the mountain area, she sees him being spun slowly rotisserie style with a two piece and a biscuit and it, it ain't looking good for him he is down and out ain't no I'm coming back and I'm grabbing a saver and flipping up and high ground no it's nothing he is being spun rotisserie style and it ain't good so she fires uh, on one of the troops that Vader orders to go recover Obi-Wan and at this point that she hits a bucket of liquid as well and literally engulfs in the flames which a lot of people are angry that Vader didn't just go through the fire and get him because a minute ago he blew out the fire he could do the same thing but I think 
he wants to torture him by getting all the Jedi and murdering them in front of him first before he takes out Obi Wan. He remember he's thought about this. He's ensued. He's 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 literally plotted this for years. So he doesn't want to kill him quick. He wants to play with his prey before it's done. And it is it is sick, and I love it because it just shows the psychotic nature of who he is that that boy that that obi-wan once knew is not there and i will say i'm gonna get angry because i've seen him pray to qui-gon a few times and qui-gon has not showed up and i'm gonna be angry if liam neeson doesn't in part somehow show up and talk to him because that's just a big troll for star wars fans and i don't i don't want that that is a big troll if you don't give us liam neeson i mean we heard his voice in like a flashback but Come on, bro. He's been praying to him since the beginning. Yoda told him at the beginning of the series that he could commune with his master, but it hasn't happened yet. And we we need Liam Neeson. And then they did an interview with Liam Neeson and asked him if he would come back to Star Wars. And he said he's just a big screen guy. Uh, he would never do TV. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Because, come on, we, we're going there. You, you better give me Liam Neeson in some form as Qui-Gon. But, so what ends up happening is the droid shows up and carries him away and for some reason vader doesn't pursue he doesn't go after him he doesn't blow out the fire which he did a few minutes ago he actually lets him escape and i think he wants him to heal and come back so that he can fight him again this isn't the last tussle they're going to have with each other because when uh, uh episode four new hope uh came out one of the conversations that vader had with uh, Obi-Wan said the last time we fought you know I was the apprentice and you were the master now I'm the master so there has to be another fight between the two and I honestly from this point I don't know where they're going but I absolutely love it um, this one I'm giving a full 10 ninja stars out of 10 on a game ninja scale of awesome this thing is this thing is tight and I hear a lot of people bitching and moaning about the things that are going on here uh, first of all I want to give a shout out to uh, Moses which a lot of people don't like her look I don't like her character too but she's playing a character and she's playing it well because I hate her in this <laughs> I have no ill will to her in real life uh, let me make that clear Moses is an amazing actress and I give it to her you made me hate you in this role but that means you're doing it well you're doing this character justice and i hope there's an arc or something back there in there because i know you want to be the grand inquisitor blah, blah. i know you want to be the grand inquisitor but there has to be more to your character this is just one side of what we're seeing there has to be something else that's motivating this and i hope they flush that out with a few episodes left um when we get down to the end of the episode, we see that the the Inquisitor, the female Inquisitor that I was speaking of, uh, the third sister, actually comes across Leia, and she's sniped the pirate, the pilot. And I don't know what this means. I don't know if she's going to let her go. I don't know if she's going to take her into custody again. I mean, there's really no point. I mean, they know Obi-Wan is there, and Vader has it well in hand, so... We'll see where they go from this. I am interested in the next episode. I will say they piqued my interest, and this episode was amazing. So, Obi-Wan, Star Wars, we're back again. Have you seen it? Will you seen it? Do you want to see it? Um, I would have to say yes. If you are a fan of the Star Wars universe, go ahead and do it. And like I said before, um, the hate that she's getting as a character, dude, that sucks. It really does. And at the end of the day, remember, this is entertainment. These people are real people. I mean, Leia is a child. And for her to receive hateful emails and anger and for Moses to receive threats and horrible bullying emails and everything for a character that she plays, um, dude, that's not cool. Like, literally, they're here to entertain you. Like, we wanted the series... We hope for this series. Now the series is a reality. Let's get some respect on it. That's all I'm saying. Like, you don't have to like her. You don't have to like the character. But come on, this is what this is about. This is the universe. This is the Star Wars universe. Like, did you want to be left with 7, 8, and 9? Like, did you want that to be the legacy of Star Wars? Nah. These series were created with fans in mind. Keep that in mind. So, you know, keep your bigotry to yourself. I mean... It's a series, dude. Come on, they didn't have to give it to us. 
Now we got it and you bitching and moaning about it? Not cool. So, like I said, I'm the Game Ninja. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking us out. And please, show this series some love. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get a season two uh, like the other Star Wars series. Um, I would like to see more into the story. Hell, I would watch an Inquisitor story sideshow. So, come on, guys. Show them support. We don't need this going away. Like, obviously, the movies have left us in 2022 with COVID and everything else. Like, the last couple of movies I've seen in theater sucked. These streaming things is where it's at. And I'm I'm loving these series. I just wish they would give us more of it. I mean, these six-episode things, I understand it costs money. And I understand it's a lot. But give us what we want because we'll show the love in it. I am the Game Ninja. Thank you for chilling with me. You are in the dojo. I will give you, as I always do, a 360. Yeah. So you know you are in the game. Oh, there you go. You know you are in the game dojo. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to take my iced tea, my remote, and my Darth Maul, and we're going to get down on some Star Wars because I ain't happy with just what I saw tonight. I want to see more. How about you, Maul? All right. That's two up. So me and Maul, we're going to get together and we're going to watch some more Star Wars, maybe play some games. What do you think about Fallen Order? Oh, yeah. Fallen Order. Fallen Order. I love you. Why weren't you in Obi-Wan? Check you guys out next time.